Good morning, it's time. It's another beautiful Sunday morning and I'm excited about it. It's time, it's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Coming up on today's show, I promised it to you, it's here. We're talking about the real first ladies of the church and I have a wonderful story that I'm going to share with you. Let's find out what really goes on inside the church walls. Also, we're talking all things entertainment. Let's talk Beyonce. It's time to get my opinion. Come on, it's time. It's time to get Lamp. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Good morning. <laughs> Here we go. Everybody, everybody, get up. Say what? Everybody, everybody, get up. Come on. Lamp, 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 lamp. When Jeff and Lamp. Motivation, inspiration, educating you. Revelation. Lamp, 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 lamp. When Jeff and Lamp. Entertainment just for you. <laughs> Somebody turn the lamp on. All right. Well, we're talking entertainment tea. Lots to dish, lots to talk about. First of all, let's talk the big subject of the week, the inauguration. Wasn't it absolutely wonderful? I absolutely enjoyed myself. I took the day off after I finished doing some civic things in reference to MLK. I took the time to enjoy the inauguration. So let me tell you some of my most stellar moments. First of all, the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. You know what I say? Good for you. I give you claps all over the place. And let me tell you something. This is for church choirs. You want to be in those places where the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir are. You want to be able to do those things. Uniforms are important. You know, we've gotten away from uniforms and doing things and looking crisp and clean and defined and godly and regal. I say slap on those uniforms. And what I even loved was it was almost like the ladies all had bought jackets. And there were matching jackets and the guys had on the red, um, look like turtlenecks and the blue. It was just absolutely fabulous. Beautiful rendition of the battle hymn of the Republic. Now, let me tell you this. Choir members out there, choir directors, if you're going to do the song, do it right. Don't mimic and make up your own version of the battle hymn of the Republic. If you're going to do it, pay homage to the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. Give them the best that you got. Exactly, because they gave the president the best that they had. All right, who else was good? Kelly Clarkson. Loved it. I thought the performance was excellent. I thought it was so cute when she was like, oh, I'm so nervous. Loved it. Fabulous moment. You did an excellent job. People were trying to say it was boring. People, you need to understand this. Understand where you are when you're performing. Certain times call for certain things. Ecclesiastes 3 says to everything there is a season. Oh, I'm about to shout. To everything there is a season. So you got to know when, when to hold them and when to fold them and when to throw them. That's what I say. Now let's get to the moment that everyone was talking about. Well, there were two moments everyone was talking about. First, I'm going to save that one. I'm, home, I'm coming back to Beyonce because I know that was what y'all want to talk about. But before that, First Lady Michelle Obama. Absolutely regal. Immaculate. And here was my thing, everybody. Michelle could have kept on the jacket all day because the jacket looked like a dress by itself. They just look so coordinated, so fashionably well. I was like, wow. I mean, Michelle's face was laid to the gods. Her hair was laid to the gods. It was, I saw that coat and all I could say was, Michelle Obama, I fancy that. Absolutely. Check marks. Tens, tens across the board. It was wonderful. I just thought that she looked excellent um, that morning at the actual inauguration and during that time. Now, let's go to the controversial part, Beyonce. So everyone's talking about Beyonce and Beyonce when she was singing. Take a look at this video real quick, okay? Take a look. I love it, especially the moment when she yanks that plug out of her ear. You, you better give them face, Beyonce. Let's talk about it. So the controversy is that Beyonce was lip singing. Here's my thing. Whether she was lip singing or whether she was not, does it really matter? Does it really matter? Because the reality is this. It's not like she was lip syncing to someone else's voice. She was lip syncing. This is the thing. If you're not a singer, you're not going to understand. All of my singers are going to understand. My true singers, because everybody that says they're a singer is not a singer. First of all, to sing in 40 and 30 degree weather is challenging. 
to sing the national anthem is even more challenging. That's one of the most difficult songs for a singer to take on and to execute. And my thing is that was Beyonce's voice. Whether she did it in the natural or she did it in the spirit. Ha! Whether she did it then or there, it really doesn't matter. The fact is, it was her voice. Why are we fussing about it? My thing is, was it you? Was it you? Uh, was it you? Was it you standing up there? Did they invite you to sing? Did they ask you to sing? Oh, oh see, uh, uh, kind of you sing. <laughs> they didn't ask you to sing, all right? They didn't ask me to sing. They asked none of us to sing. That's Beyonce to sing. Beyonce, I'm telling you right now, number one, you look graceful. You look elegant. When you and Jay-Z stepped down, when they were coming down, I said, now that's what you call money. Checkmate, I fancy that. Yes. Absolutely wonderful. I take nothing from Beyonce. And who else is not taking anything? The Queen of Soul herself, Aretha Franklin. Y'all remember Aretha was there with that big good church hat. The last inauguration, singing her version of My Country, A Tears of Thee. However, Aretha came and Aretha said, you know, I laugh at this. Because the reality is, is that the weather, the climate and everything. Aretha said, you know what, next time I think I may do the same thing. Good for you, Riri. Free we riding on a freeway. All the love in a big Cadillac. Ah! All right, who? I had an Aretha moment. Okay, back to it. Nonetheless, Aretha talking about Beyonce. I love it. Come to bat for her. J-Lo came to bat as well. Awesome job, Beyonce. We're not even worried about. All right. Everyone's been asking about working out with me. I got to go. I got to rap. Got to get out. Got to do some things. Everyone's been asking about working out. This Saturday, we're celebrating. It's the pre-celebration of the end of season one for the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Join me at 1230 at the Bible Way AC Jackson Wellness Center. 1230, come work out with me and fitness guru himself, James Patrick Allen. Y'all saw the clips. Everyone's been calling about it. It's not too late to sign up. Bring your families, bring your friends, bring your children, um, bring your kids, bring your wife, hide your kids, hide your wife, whatever you're going to do. But Bring everybody because this is going to be a great time as we celebrate. And I'm going to have special guests that are going to make appearances as well. It's going down, baby. February 2nd, 2013, the AC Jackson Wellness Center on the campus of the Bible Way Church of Atlas Road, where the pastor is, the senator, the reverend, the one and the only, Dal Jackson. All right, join me there. It's going to be great. I got to go because I got to get out on the street. Coffee cups up and your pinkies are out. I'm feeling fabulous this morning. Good morning, you've a lamp. If you love what Jeffrey is wearing each week, go see Dr. Terrence Tyndall at Jerome and Company. Don't worry, ladies, they carry women's clothing too, so you can look your best every day. For beautiful casual and dress attire for men and ladies, go to the Columbia style leader, Jerome and Company. Jeffrey Good morning, and we're back here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, put your coffee cups down right now. I know you're getting ready for church. You're probably eating your grits, your good bacon. It's all right. I'm excited because I told you that I was going to do it. What are you talking about, Jeffrey? I'm glad that you asked. So the controversial show, The Sisterhood, which I've gone on record to confess, is has and has become one of my favorite shows by far. It's about five first ladies from the Atlanta, Georgia metropolitan area. And it follows their lives, follows their journeys as first ladies, as mothers, as women of the world and women of God. And I'm excited that I was able to get some of the leading ladies of South Carolina, some of our first leading ladies of South Carolina to be here. And one of them, all the way from Charleston, South Carolina, is here with us this morning. And that's First Lady Deronda Corbin Washington. Good morning. Good morning, Jeffrey. How are you this morning? I'm great. First great. of all, let me say, right here Whoo! you look amazing thank I you i think Jeffrey. what really gets me is that you look so elegant you just you have the poise the com the poise the composure of a first lady well thank you and i know some people probably say well what is the poise and composure that's what we're going to get down to the nitty and the gritty but deronda talk to us first deronda corbin washington before you became First Lady Deronda Corbin Washington, 
you were Deronda Corbin. Yes. So take us to young Deronda. Were you one who was raised in the church? Were you familiar with this thing called church? Well, actually, um, I have been a first daughter for 34 years. You're a PK. I am a PK. I love An MD, it. a minister's daughter, a preacher's kid, I whatever you want to call it, uh -huh. for 34 years. Okay. Um, so being in ministry, uh, helping a male in mm -hmm. some capacity is not new to me. Okay. Um, I've seen the joys, the pains, the triumphs, the trials of being a first family in an African American church. Was it was it hard with it with your let's let's go back and you're seeing your mom and you're seeing your dad and you're seeing them being ministers and doing ministry and doing work. Was that um, something that you always aspired to do? Be a, not necessarily a first daughter, but just be someone in ministry um, and in the work of the Lord? Honestly, working for God, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I never aspired to be a first lady. In fact, that's something that I ran away from. Okay. One reason being is the simple fact that I knew I constantly had to share my father. Okay. So um, I have a brother and a sister, mm -hmm. a mom, but just imagine sharing your parents, someone that you look up to, especially since I'm a daddy's girl. Right. So just imagine sharing your father with two, 300 people. Right. Imagine sharing your father with people in the church that don't have fathers. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's great, mm -hmm. um, the ministry that my father was called to is an awesome ministry, mm -hmm. but sometimes sharing your dad at a young age, you quite don't understand. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's challenging for you now. So you, you end up, you're of course you're a minister's daughter, so that means you're in church. Yes. You're in church and the Lord allows um, a knight in shining armor to pluck a rose from his garden yeah. by the name of Deronda Corbin. And your your um, knight in shining armor goes by the name of Pastor Jared. Jared Britton Washington. You better say, she said that name. <laughs> right there, saints. She said that name like she looked. She said Jared Britton Washington. She said, you, you just gave me a Michelle Obama moment. I oh. absolutely love it. So Jared Brit Britton Washington, tell the viewers real quick so they can just go on the journey. How did you all meet? Um, actually, my father pastored Jared's church 20 years prior to us actually uh, getting connected. Mm -hmm. I have fond memories of his mom, mm -hmm. I have fond memories of the congregation, I have fond memories of the church, but I just could not quite remember who Jared Britton Washington <laughs> was. Wow. Uh, and fast forward about 20 years, I was speaking at uh, one of my best friend's funeral. Mm -hmm. And um, as the ministers were recessing out of the church after the funeral, I saw my father walk out with the clergy and I saw this gentleman in a bow tie. Mm -hmm. And in my moment of despair, this gentleman who I absolutely had no idea was just reassured me that everything was going to be okay. Yes, so maybe that was a sign that God was sending me someone in that capacity. And Jared would send inspirational messages via Facebook. Thank God for Facebook. Yeah, hello, somebody. Um, <laughs> See, the tool can be used what the devil meant for bad. God can use it and work it for your good. Come on, somebody. Yes, and he sent me inspirational messages um, to encourage me after the loss of my best friend. And we became great friends. Um, he was one of my best male friends, I call mm. it. And I still can't remember the day that our friendship crossed um, from being friends to mm -hmm. being prayer partners. Mm -hmm. And let me explain. Being prayer partners first, uh, because that was the foundation of our friendship, mm -hmm. was very instrumental in our relationship. Mm -hmm. So we went from being friends, prayer partners, to being engaged, and to being married. To being married. What is it like? You're married. You're married <laughs> now. Deronda Corbin Washington. So during this time, you become engaged. Let's start there. You're engaged to the pastor of a church. And he's a young pastor. Now, I've heard a lot about Pastor Washington, which I know a lot of you in Columbia have, especially those of you who are in the um, African Methodist Episcopal District because he's been all over the state and the Southeast region. So right. being being in that, because you, you notice again, you were the minister's daughter. Now you're becoming the, you're, now you're the fiance of a pastor. Yes. What was that like? Um, well, immediately when we were courting, even before we were even engaged, one thing that we said that we would do is support each other's ministry. Um, we're both busy, uh, we're both community oriented, so we had to juggle our schedules. And one thing that I committed to that said, anytime that he was in the pulpit, anytime that he had preaching engagements, speaking engagements, I would be there. Um, it's good to see faces that you kind of know that are all familiar in the audience, but mm -hmm. there's just something different about having someone that you know that you connect with mm -hmm. that really has your back. Mm -hmm. So consequently, what ended up happening was one speaking engagement here and there and two speaking engagements turned to maybe five or six speaking engagements in one week. And when he was assigned as pastor, I prayed, I fasted, and I said, okay, God, what is it that you want me to do? And God clearly spoke, you support Jared in his ministry. And I did that, and consequently, I ended up joining his church, and 
the rest is history. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. 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 You're taking me in this morning. <laughs> Listen, I know y'all think y'all don't have to get dressed for church, but you must get dressed. We're going to take a commercial break. And when we come back, I want to discuss, because now you've taken us through the journey. You've met your knight in shining armor. You have met your Boaz. And so now I want to talk about Deronda Corbin Washington, the first lady, and the joys, the trials, and the tribulations of being a first lady. Keep it right here. Coffee cups, pick them back up, and your pinkies out more with first lady Deronda Corbin Washington as we talk about being a first lady in the church right here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Good morning. Jeffrey Lampkin. <laughs> Cannon & Graves is a proud sponsor of the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Located at 1837 Wilson Road in Newberry, Cannon & Graves has the perfect certified used car for you. Their extensive inventory has something in every price range, and they can get everyone financed, regardless of credit. All cars come with a warranty to give you the peace of mind you deserve. Come see Steve and Reggie and find your new car at Cannon and Graves. And we're back here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, coffee cup's down right now. We're talking with First Lady Deronda Corbin Washington. And um, we're talking about the sisterhood and the role of the First Lady in the church. So, Deronda, let me ask this question because you told us about your love story. You've had the opportunity to see some of the episodes of the sisterhood. Yes. What are your thoughts? Um, well, let me say this. Mm -hmm. Their reality is not my truth. Okay. Uh, there are certain well, points. Say that again. Their reality is not my truth. Keep going. Whew. I received their reality is not my truth. I think a lot of times we get confused with reality shows right. and think that it's the truth. But it's not the truth. It's not your truth. Keep going. Well, you have to realize, first of all, this sisterhood, it's uh, very much so filtered. Okay. Um, like I said, their reality is not my truth. Mm -hmm. My job as first lady, number one, is to have my husband's back at all time. Mm -hmm. I loosely call it ground patrol. Okay. Uh, ground patrol, if you see them when planes are landing, they're helping mm -hmm. in directing the plane to land, but they don't say anything. Right. Uh, because I believe that God has called my husband and I support him. I try not to give him direction because he ultimately hears from God. Uh, being a first lady uh, in ministry, sometimes it's a lonely road. Um, friends that you had before, uh, you may not necessarily have because the more God uh, instills in you, the more God gives you, you're going to another level. And not everyone understands that. Mm -hmm. um, I intercede on my husband's behalf. I pray, I fast, and I make sure that I am the support system. Mm -hmm. um, everyone says, first lady, first lady. You know, I'm still Deronda. Okay. I still have pains. I still have hangups. You know, I still have down days mm -hmm. like any other female has. And we see some of those on the show. And that was one of the things I want to ask. Are they, maybe they're not that intense, um, per se. And like you said, they're filtered because a lot of it is cut and paste and edited together. But the struggles, I, I often say the struggle is real. And I would say that the struggle has to be real for you at times. Right. You have to be on at all times. Okay. Um, my husband and I, on the way to church, we pastor, well, he pastors a church on John's Island that's in a rural area of Charleston. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So most people, when they're getting ready for church, they are like, okay, well, what are we gonna do today? We hope the pastor preaches a good word. What is the choir singing? Mm -hmm. On our way to church, which is about a 25 or 30 minute drive, mm -hmm. we're praying, we're, we're seeking God for him to take over, have a great, awesome uh, experience at church. And I'm making sure that the atmosphere is, first of all, set in the car before we could even go into church because people are tugging and pulling on you. When we walk in church, you are on. Um, and in, when I say it's, it's a lonely road sometimes, I can tell you stories, I won't tell it today. <laughs> From sitting on the second pew, a lot right. of people idolize, a lot of people uh, think, oh, you know, First Lady is such a prestigious, oh, they mm -hmm. hold us to a standard in which they're not even willing to hold themselves. Right. That's number one. Right. Uh, but I want to be the role model. Mm -hmm. That's, and I'm a young First Lady. I'm only 34 years old. That's what I was about to ask. Is that difficult? Because you're so young. Do you find, do you find adversity of people, do they, do they respect you because of the role or do they challenge you because of your age? Well, they respect the position first. Okay. They respect the role. Okay. Uh, and one thing, when they see you work in ministry, and when they see that you have a mind for the children, when they see that you have a mind for the congregation, they'll work with you. I am not the typical first lady. I only wear a hat on the first Sunday. Okay. But our motto is we work. Okay. We worship. It's about service. We provide outreach. Mm -hmm. 
we recruit, we retain souls for the kingdom, and we're about kingdom building. Mm -hmm. So in everything that we do, we work. Uh, we have church cleanups. Mm -hmm. So there's no mistake that I will have on sweatpants, t-shirts, maybe a do-rag tied around my head, right. working the same way that my our parishioners mm -hmm. work. I won't do anything, uh, have my parishioners do anything that I'm not willing to do. You're not willing to do. Let me ask this question, Deronda, because you said earlier that you are Deronda, and sometimes people get caught up in the position, but you're so humble about it. You're so, I'm Deronda. Who is Deronda? So, so the young girls will know, who is Deronda? Deronda is who? Deronda is a role model. Okay. Deronda is a praying woman. Mm -hmm. Deronda is charismatic. Deronda likes just doing the, the normal things that any other woman What's does. Normal? So you like shopping? Occasionally. Okay. I, I like shopping. I just don't like spending money. <laughs> so maybe, I love it. Uh, maybe that stereotype that they okay. have of first ladies always wanting to shop, mm -hmm. always having lunch. Um, I work. Let's talk about some of the stereotypes because um, r real quick as, as we go in. Talking about the stereotypes because there are some and I like to deal with it. And y'all know on the Jeffrey Lampkin show, we keep it real. So some of the stereotypes is you like to look cute, be fancy, big hat. Is that classifies, as that, is the, does that make me a first lady because uh, I wear a big hat? No, okay. they, they believe that. They okay. believe the big hats, sitting on the second pew, um, wearing uh, the, the pearls, the glove. Well, I do wear my pearls. There's nothing but wrong with it because the, you are the, AKA yes, a lady am. of the pearls. Shout out to all the members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated this morning. You have a gem in your bosom. Keep going. Thank you. Um, but they see, you know, the hats. They see, you know, and I heard someone talk about a parking space. Right. Um, my husband and I ride to church together. We are one. Uh, but <laughs> I'm about to lose it on this couch. Say that one more time. We are one. We are one. We and are so one. with one, one thing you said earlier, you understand the order. I mm -hmm. think sometimes people get confused and maybe the first ladies, because there are some out there. Let's deal with reality. There are some who believe that they, because I'm the first lady, I am the um, head of the church. But you said it yourself. You said, I am here for my husband. Yes. And the, the biggest thing I like was the analogy, y'all, and I know y'all are going to hit it up on Facebook. Tell me if you like the, the analogy where she says, it's like bringing in an airplane and you are that ground support where you never speak, but you just do actions. And that action is going out there and working with the children and working for your husband. What's the hardest thing? Let me ask this question real quick. What is the hardest thing for you? Being a first lady and things that you deal with, that you see with your husband, what's the hardest thing for you as a first lady? The most difficult or challenging? The most challenging thing is allowing my emotions to be at still, just for a moment. Okay. Um, when I see things, and I've, I've seen a lot of things since my childhood, um, in our carnal mind, naturally, we're ready to fight flight that type of mode, always ready to be, you know, to defend. I have my husband's back, I have my father's back constantly. Right. But sometimes we, well all the time, we can't discuss things openly. Right. Um, I see sometimes where it's hard on him mm -hmm. um, after service. Um, I see the, the pressures after meetings, because being a pastor is like running a board, having right. opposition sometimes, but the great thing is we also have people who support us. Right. So with his vision, his leadership is the hardest thing is to not allow my emotions to be carried out immediately. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you really have to think, because sometimes we want to fight, sometimes we want to carry on, but we have to remember that people are watching us, when we, even when we don't think that people even are watching us. Wow, y'all, I'm gonna stop because Deronda is almost literally, and I wish you could see in tears this morning as you talk about your love and your passion for the church, for the husband. It's admirable. It is absolutely admirable. I am blown this morning. You are what I define as a leading first lady. Before we go real quick, the only thing I'm going to ask you to do is look at the camera, and I just want you to give a word to the people, whatever is on your heart, just a little two-minute, one-minute word, just anything you want to say to the people to encourage them. Well, I want to first <laughs> say, parishioners, support your pastor. Love your pastor. Have your pastors back, even in opposition. When the lights are on and service starts, you are one. Uh, First ladies, I wanna encourage you. I know that it's a daunting task and it's a great task that we have, but remain humble, remain humble to the calling. Remember what you are called for. Continue to pray for your first ladies, uh, parishioners, uh, have their back, encourage them and support them. Even if it's just a hug, even if it's just a smile, but make sure you have their back. And we like to have a good time too. So just smile and enjoy your pastor and support your pastor and their first lady. Woo!
I am done. Somebody passed the offering plate this morning. Y'all still have to go to church. Don't play with me out there. Go ahead and put them stockings on. I know you got an usher this morning. First Lady Deronda Corbin Washington, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being having. here this morning. Thank you for being a leading lady of God. Ladies thank and gentlemen, you. we got more coming up. Keep it right there. Coffee cups up and your pinkies are out. More is happening right here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Good morning. Jeffrey Lampkin. <laughs> Momo's Bistro, now serving lunch Tuesday through Friday from 11.30 to 2, and Sunday brunch from 10.30 to 2.30. Classic Southern food with classic French preparation. Dijon and shallot encrusted New York strip, fresh seafood over local green salad and vegetables, and so much more. In a comfortable yet elegant setting. Momo's Bistro, 2930 Divine Street. If you love what Jeffrey is wearing each week, go see Dr. Terrence Tyndall at Jerome & Company. Don't worry, ladies. They carry women's clothing, too, so you can look your best every day. For beautiful casual and dress attire for men and ladies, go to the Columbia Style Leader, Jerome & Company. Jeffrey Lam <laughs> What an amazing show. I told y'all I was ready. We're dealing with real topics here. Tell everybody, make sure they gather around on Sunday morning. We're getting it right. We're going to clean up what we messed up and we're starting our lives over again and i love it i love the interview this morning thank you to first lady deronda corbin washington who joined me on the couch this morning to talk about first ladies see the thing is that there are some beautiful loving first ladies who are real who live for the lord and her husband was here as well pastor jared washington good morning to the um, family out there in charleston south carolina nonetheless word for the day image according to webster image is defined as the presentation presented to someone for public viewing okay so when we talk about image your image is everything i've always heard the old proverb that says don't let your good be spoken evil of you have to be careful of the things that you do sometimes people can't handle you know seeing you do particular things it kind of throws them off throws them for a loop you have to walk in the calling and the authority that you are called into so if you were called to be a first lady, whether you were called to be, a, if you were called to be a singer on the choir, that means you need to come to choir rehearsal. That means you need to show up on time. That means that when you're on the choir stand, you need to look like you want to be singing. We're marching, marching up to Zion. You got to look the part that you're in. If you are a preacher, you must carry the word in season and out of season. If you are a teacher, if you want your children to be inspired and educated and good morning to all of my teachers out there. Thank you for the great job that you do. Go into that classroom on Monday morning and put a smile on your face and say, good morning, students. I'm excited that you're here to learn. Anything that you do, present your best image. Always remember that as First Lady Washington said this morning, people are always watching, whether you believe it or whether you don't. If you don't think they're watching, do something and watch and see if they don't blast it. Be careful and always remember, don't let your you're good. Be spoken evil of. That's all I got time for. Next week, we're bringing you more riveting TV. Remember, join me February 2nd, AC Jackson Wellness Center, as we begin our pre-celebration of the end of season one of the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. With that being said, have a great week, everyone. Coffee cups up, pinkies out. You've been lamp. I fancy that. Good morning. <laughs> Everybody, everybody get up. Come on. Land, 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 land. And Jeffrey Lamb, kid. <laughs> Somebody turn the lamp on.